Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the file input stream. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, and I'm going to select the begin button here. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the file input stream class. Now the primary purpose of the file input stream class is to read an input stream from a file. Imagine that. Now this tutorial will directly complement my file output stream tutorial as I will take the bitmap image we built in that tutorial, read it in, manipulate it, and write it back out. The file input stream class implements auto closable so we can use the try with resources type exception handling. Alright, let's come down here. We got a lot of source code to highlight today. Most of it's just cut and pasted from the file output stream class there. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt. Um, if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking selecting new shortcut. CMD next and finish. Just that easy. Let's go ahead and open that up. Type in Java C which is a Java compiler command. Uh, you should see all this stuff scroll by. If you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on, uh, on installing and configuring the Java development kit before you continue. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash cd changes the directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called java with the md command. Then I'm going to change directory to the, to the java folder. Now I already have the java folder, so but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create it for you. And I'm going to make another directory here called fis, short for file input stream change directories to that folder on notepad fis.java all right and we'll control v to paste all that stuff in there we'll come up here and save all right um so i'm importing java.io package here and there's my main method entry point now my um what I did is I, I created this method here called build original bitmap with a single parameter here of, of file type there basically. And all the source code from here on down is pretty much from the last tutorial where it builds that little striped bitmap that we have there. Okay, so that's the, the purpose of that. So the first uh, statement up here basically I'm creating a file object there and that of course is off the root, the Java folder, then the FIS folder, and then test.bmp. Right? And then I'm creating another file object, same path, only it's called newbmp.bmp. Okay? Then I'm invoking my build original bitmap function there, so we'll, we'll actually get our bitmap going on that. And then um, let's go ahead and save that and clear our screen, and we'll just compile it and run it and see where we're at right on there right that. So let's do uh, Java C fis.java and let's run it. Let's invoke virtual machine. We'll invoke the fis class there. Okay, uh, now if we do a directory here, we got our test BMP and our new BMP. So I'm just going to do an ms paint uh, test.bmp, right? And let's zoom in on that guy there. So you can see that's that's what our bitmap looked like just from, from before there. And I'm going to just go ahead and close out of that. Pop back to here there, so that's, we built our original bitmap again. Now, using the file input stream, I'm creating a new file input stream object here, FIS, and um, basically invoking the parameter that takes a file object, and I am reading the test bitmap file, right? So this is how easy it is. We can um, simply create a, a byte array here, new byte and we can read from the FIS reference variable we can invoke the available method which will tell us the number of bytes that are in the input stream there okay then we can simply um, invoke the read method right the read method with no parameters will read one single byte the read method with the with the byte array parameter will populate our byte b array with all of the bytes that are in the input stream. So that's how easy it is to read an input stream, right? Using the file input stream. All right, now I've got this multi-line comment out here. Now let's talk about the file output stream with the right thing there too as well. It's just as easy to, to write a file as it was to read it. 
So now that we've got this B array, I'm going to create a um, file output stream, new BMP for the reference variable, and a new file output object. I'm passing in the FBMP, which is this particular reference variable up here, which is our new bitmap.bmp. Now I'm invoking the write method, right? Passing it the B array, which is our byte array here that we, uh, that we populated up here. And that's all there is to that. It's like literally that simple to actually use file output stream to write, okay? So we don't have to write bit by bit by bit by bit, or byte by byte by byte, sorry. Uh, we can write the whole entire byte array in one single statement there. So that has left us with a new bmp.bmp and test bmp. So I'm gonna ms paint uh, new bmp.bmp, right? And we'll go ahead and zoom in on that. And you can see they're identical, right? So we basically read the array with file input stream and then we wrote the array with file output stream or wrote the file, right? So now what I'm gonna do is after we read the array, I've just created this these few lines of code here, um, declaring an int counter, and then I am looping through from basically pos uh, position 25 in that array through 219, which is where the actual pixel data resides, right? If you remember from my previous tutorial, um, you have to specify 26 for this particular value in the header, which is the start of the pixel data, okay? Our pixel data is gonna be 192 <clears throat> um, bytes long because we have basically, we'll do the math again, 8 times 8 is 64, so we're representing 64 pixel. Each one of them is 3 bytes long to be 24 bits, so 64 times 3 is 192. So I'm going to loop through basically um, position 25 through 219, and I'm just doing a, I haven't used a switch statement in a long time, especially one with the fall through stuff, so I figured I'd do that. So case zero, one, and two all represent um, basically being populated with a, a number zero there for that. And then four, five, and six will be a 255. This won't exactly like give us a, <clears throat> excuse me, it won't exactly give us a black and white checkerboard because it'll be off just a little bit. I did that on purpose there. So it'll give us a checkerboard that kind of changes colors, but that checkerboard pattern that we're looking for here, if you can visualize this, if you can't visualize that, don't worry about it. This, this might be just a little bit confusing, but if you can visualize it, that's great, because then I just increment the counter, and if the counter is greater than six, I just set it back to zero, right? So that, that basically is going to change three byte values and then three byte values, all right? So let's go ahead and save this. drink of water there and <clears throat> let's come out here let's Java C actually let's clear our screen Java C to compile this Java to run it now let's do it in quick directory you can see there's still the same file size there right but now if we do MS paint BMP uh, and let's zoom in on that right with the zoom here you see we got this nice little checkerboard pattern there so um, that's basically what I was looking to accomplish there I mean it's not quite exactly like you know it is it's a, it, it we manipulated the bitmap we we did exactly what we wanted to do demonstrating this here I demonstrated the file input stream right with the um, the read method the one that the overloaded version that takes a byte array there and I also demonstrated the overloaded version of the writer uh, method that takes a byte array there too so we did exactly what we wanted to accomplish on that um, looks like a pretty good visual representation to me there's the um, original file and original uh, well that one that one isn't closed up there yet let's just go and get the original up here MS paint That was the old version of it there. Okay, so you can see the original and the new version. Okay, side by side, cool. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get that off screen, get that off screen and close out of this and that. And I don't really have any final thoughts on that. I think I'm pretty much kind of done with the um, the input output stuff there. There is a the uh, Java IO package is a it's a huge package there. There's a lot of different classes in there, but yeah, you know, it'll take just a long, long time to actually you know go through each individual one. And I think I've 
probably probably lose in from lose interest after a while on my tutorial series. So I'm going to move on to a different subject. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but I think I'm going to go with multi-threading and then and maybe my next video there. But anyway, so yeah. Um, if if um, well, no, we'll just go ahead and go with that. Um, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.